All right, hey everybody, welcome to the weekly Heather Wells show. That's what I call it, but <laughs> she hates to hear that. But listen, we are here with Heather Wells and Shelly. We're going to tell you about Shelly in just a second. My name is Corey. I'm a brain balance parent. Uh, I had a, a son that went to the program for nine months. He's he's still my son. I say I had a son. <laughs> he's still here. He's still my son. And um, you know, uh, I think that in in these crazy times where we are kind of stuck at home, uh, it's uh, it's it's a challenge for us parents to to keep our kids busy and keep them keep them going. And one of the ways that we can stimulate their brains is, uh, of course, through art. And so Shelly is here. Shelly is the educational director of. Abracadoodle, and I dare you to say that like five times fast, okay? <laughs> Abracadoodle of North Texas. I want you to check her out. And then of course we have Heather Wells, board certified cognitive specialist with Brain Balance Centers of Katy, Mansfield, and South Lake. So uh, with that, you know, I'm just the host to introduce the stars. I'm gonna back <laughs> away and Heather, you're gonna take the reins for this meeting. So the meeting's okay. all yours. Thank you, Corey. For, uh, Shelly, first of all, thanks for being here. And one thing I want to tell everyone um, is that we went to high school together. We graduated together and you are always just so beautiful and so sweet. And it's really fun to be on here with you right now. Uh, would you just tell everyone a little bit about yourself um, just so they can get to know you a little bit and, 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 and just about Abercadoodle, you know, okay. and, and what led you there? Um, well, I've been with Abracadoodle. We opened June of 2016. Um, I was looking for a, a business and still kind of wanted to be around for, well, I did want to be home for my kids, work from home. Um, so we started um, working with Abracadoodle. We're in our education program where we, um, it's mobile, so I'm working out of my home, but we partner up with different sites in the community to offer art. Um, we do meet national standards in art and state standards in art. That's awesome. Uh, what um, what made you decide Abracadoodle? Yeah, what what led you? I, I love that you want your you wanted to be the home for your parents. A lot of parents are probably saying, "Please tell us how you were home for your parents and working," because everybody's facing that right now. And if you have any tips on that, I'm sure they would love that too. Well, I have teenagers now, so you don't see a whole lot of them. Right, right. <laughs> they kind of hide from us, um, but. I, I love being home with my kids and I was a stay at home parent for many, many years. I still had a part time job, but um, was a stay at home mom. But when I started looking for businesses, my kids are really artistic. Both of them are. I look at what they do and it amazes me. So um, and art is usually one of the first things that they cut programs. You know, they streamline it. They mm -hmm. shorten them. Um, you don't get as many art classes or the arts, any arts. So um, I really enjoy seeing what my children can do. And um, that kind of led us in this direction to Africa doodle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're right. The, the um, I, I'm hearing a lot of feedback, but um, let's see. Uh, let's see what my volume is on. Um, I hope everybody probably just heard you're, that. You're, you're good, Heather. I came back in. No, you're good. So what I did was uh, I'm going to mute Shelly's mic when you're talking because there's a little bit of feedback, okay. but it's okay. We got it. No, covered. it's I got fine. You. I just, I was trying to figure out, yeah, what I could do on my end. Thank you. Um, it's a shame that those programs get cut because we're going to be talking about all of the ways that art benefits development. And it goes way beyond what I think a lot of people realize. I wouldn't realize it if I didn't have a neurology background. So um, tell us a little bit about, because I, what kind of art y'all do? I really, I know that it's developmentally based. Can you talk a little bit about the different stages and all the different ages you work with? Well, we start young. We start with a parent-child class at 20 months. Um, our first class is called our Toosie Doodlers. And um, basically we're working on fine motor, gross motor skills, social socialization, um, our parents, of course, are in there with our little guys and little girls. And um, but we basically are it's the child we are working on. Working on those motor skills, cutting. Um, they do some really fun stuff <laughs> in that class. And then we go up to our mini doulers as ages three to five. Same thing. We're still working on our motor skills, um, working on using scissors and cutting and tearing. Uh, but we use paint. We use um, you would be amazed at some of the materials that we bring in. We are the ones that let you get messy. And a lot of parents enjoy us because we'll clean it up and <laughs> <laughs> as messy as they want. 
Um, we also, um, our next group is our doodlers and those are ages six to 12. Um, typically after school programming with those guys. Um, and then the doodler plus we go up to middle school, but we also do adults. We can go, um, our curriculum works with all ages. So yeah, you were talking about working even with this, the seniors. Um, and that, that really struck a chord with me. You know, my dad lost the right hemisphere of his brain to a tumor. My mom had a massive stroke. So I think it's really special that you work with all the ages. And I, I bet it's a really good bonding experience with parents and kids to work on art together, right? Definitely. Our biggest thing is um, we have a, a hands-off uh, policy. <laughs> when, when the little ones are, um, and we let parents come in, that usually at three to five, we have a lot of parents that come to our classes at that age too. But we just ask that they let the child do as much as they can, let it be their artwork. Um, you know, if your child comes with a Picasso home from school, they may not have done all of that. <laughs> right. so, and we're that we're that person who just it's all about their creativity and let them do their thing. So that that was that's one of my favorite things about what you do is is that it's not about perfection. It's about creativity. And that is really powerful. Uh, creativity. Uh, Barbara Fredrickson, she is a, a, a professor at the University of North Carolina. She's kind of a hero of mine with the research that she does. But she has what is coined the broaden and build theory. And it is widely quoted throughout the positive psychology literature. And what it is, is at, if you if you are all about compliance and doing things perfectly, it narrows your focus. It that. But when you are allowed creativity and innovation, and by the way, these are some of the skills, the top skills needed in the workplace. These are skills, uh, the, the broad skills that we need to get through relationships where it, we have flexible thinking. It's not everything has to be just like this and I'm kind of obsessive about it or I'm defiant. I'm right and you're wrong. That creativity allows flexible thinking and, and it opens up your mind to all the possibilities. And those are skills that we need to get along with people. They're skills we happy ourselves. So if we don't get our way, it doesn't ruin our day. And we can say, you know what? I get your perspective. And we learn stuff in our motor system, our sensory motor system first. And then it translates into all of these cognitive skills. So broaden, the broaden part of that broaden and build involves imagination and creativity. And people are much happier when it's more about agency, which is, the competence to find multiple pathways around a setback than it is about compliance. We all have rules we have to follow. We know that, but kids don't learn a sense of self as much when they're just told exactly what to do and how to do it all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, will you share a little bit about what you do um, after they create the art and how they talk about it? <laughs> Um, well, and I'll share my story I shared with you the other day, too. So um, we do a gallery at the end. We love for them to share because what you see, everybody interprets art differently. So whatever you see on the board on the page may not be exactly what the child was wanting you to see. So uh, we have a gallery at the end of the show or at the end of the class where they come up and they, everybody gets a chance to talk about their artwork. So um, they can tell stories, some of them are elaborate, they go into a lot of details. We ask them about the artists that we study that day because we're really big on learning about different artists' techniques. Um, and we'll ask them, um, we learn through questioning. So we ask them a lot of questions about what they were doing, what their favorite part was in the whole art process um, that day. But a lot of them I will use this example because it's my favorite um, little guy. We did a beach scene and um, we painted that day and then we just let them go. So. We learned about the artist was Bullman. Um, he paints about Haiti, pink houses, yellow houses. And so that's what our project was all about, the beach. And um, he drew a truck on the on, in brown paint in the front of his picture. And when he got up to tell about his picture, he was talking about this mud truck, which he had already told me was a mud truck on there. But it was zooming across the beach, spraying mud. <laughs> another car. And it was, three. It was a three-year-old. But just the imagination that he had. You know, he got the concept. We were working on this artist and this this type of project. But at the end of the day, he had a mud truck and we were like, that's wonderful. You know, we love your creativity and let them go with it. So I love that so much. When you 
and I encourage parents to do this with art. I encourage you to do it with literacy when you're reading books together, ask open-ended questions. Uh, what do you think about, you know, find out what the problem was, what the solution, how the characters were feeling. Well, what do you think about that? H have you ever faced anything similar? What did you do? Would you do anything different next time? You're really growing their critical thinking skills, their predictive skills. You're, um, and, and it's a great opportunity, just like people see different things in the art. Uh, people have books that resonate with them differently. They're going to have different opinions about the mm -hmm. characters. And it's not that one is right is wrong. And that is such a healthy way to develop that. And even you letting them get their hands dirty, that is sensory input. <laughs> you know, we, we have a, a lot of kids who have tactile sensitivities and they do not, don't touch me or, you know, they don't, they they don't want their hands dirty, but that gives us information that helps us learn about the world. Sensory motor input is what teaches us about the world in the first place. So have parents given you any feedback about that part of the program? But parents love that we clean up. I mean, <laughs> they can, we give them all types of different, and we do, a, we use a lot of different materials. We don't just use paint or, you know, watercolors, things like that. I mean, when you were talking about sensories, we have a whole uh, curriculum based on senses. It's called All My Senses. We paint with Kool-Aid and uh, pudding. Um, so we do a lot of different things and it is all about sensory and working on those motor skills too. So, um, but the parents, I think the parents enjoy it. They don't have a lot of the stuff at the house uh, maybe. And we were engaging them and sharing more things with them that maybe you wouldn't think about using as art supplies. So. <laughs> Yeah, it was, you're, you're using creativity right there. <laughs> so right. I know that I want you to share kind of some of the challenges you're putting out there. But but for these, uh, since we're kind of shut down right now, um, what would be some things? Can you get, kind of brainstorm a few ideas for parents right now that they could do with maybe what they do have at home and maybe things that they may have laying around that they don't think of as being part of art? Well, and right now, I mean, if you're on any type of social media, there are tons of different projects being posted daily by different organizations. And we even do that, too. We're doing our splat doodle. It's free. We'll post another a new one every week. It's a you'll learn about um, an artist. I think the first one was Mondrian. So and basically you just and it gives you steps. It tells you how to do the project. And then it also gives you some other creativity, creative ideas to do. Um, along with that. So I've had a few people post those. Um, and that's one of our things we want you to post. We want you to post on our social media. We want to see what you do. Um, but, you know, if you have, I'm going to show you, I have, can I show you a picture? Please do. So this is something we're doing with one of our after school programs. So, I mean, we're using magazines. So we made a lion. It's the lion and the mouse. I'm going to give you see the mouse. So, um, <laughs> you yeah, I saw it. so this things like this are really easy just to um, get your, you know, we do a whole lesson on the mouse and they learn all about that myth and legend. And then we um, but using magazines, just anything laying around, you can make into an art project, water bottles, recycling. Um, there's so much we can make clocks out of um, cereal boxes. So <laughs> we do so many different things. You, you can be artistic just with whatever you have laying around basically. So, yeah. It, and you know, one thing that I have, cause you, you know, the art side of it, like I'm so excited about this today. I've been looking so forward to this. <laughs> um, but you know, I encourage uh, families to journal. I mean, even the adults mm -hmm. too, but it's so, it's such a powerful thing, you know, and, and it reminded me of some of the things you mentioned during those galleries is, you know, I will, you know, what my favorite activity, this week was what because why fill in the blank my least favorite activity was this because blah 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 you know i did my best work on this i could have worked harder on this my goal for next week is this sometimes it's good to just just like art let them do their thing sometimes journaling can, whatever's on their mind just it's such a good kind of venting and processing experience and and then it's also good to create journals of pictures, pictures that strike a chord with them. You're really helping them get to know who they are. And then th those are little clues that you can use to intrinsically motivate kids to do what they need to do, you know, um, and, and fine motor. You're talking about, you know, the scissors and cutting, and of course, drawing with a paintbrush or crayons or, or pens. 
fine motor develops attention, self-regulation, uh, hand-eye, all of this is hand-eye coordination, which very directly relates to literacy, reading and writing. And so art just grows so many skills. Um, so what, what, what do you tell me a little bit about some of the older kids that you work with and some of their favorite things or what, and also maybe even what your kids, your, your kids are artists. <laughs> what kind of stuff do they like to do? Well, my oldest only likes to draw. So if you tell him, and that's one thing when I, I learned so much about art, some people, they only think art is drawing and some only think it's painting and we do everything. We're a complete, um, mixed media we do it all so um my youngest one he draws also but um which he's in um, ap art this year so we're kind of like what <laughs> uh, and he's he brings home stuff and i'm amazed at what he does um so but the, a lot of the older the kids that are in our six to twelve it it just depends on what the curriculum is right now uh we're doing online classes with trying to finish up some of our after school programming because you know schools are shut down so we're doing some mm -hmm. online classes um and we're doing myths and legends and the kids are loving it. we did a unicorn in one of the classes and i had probably four emails from parents saying my child is ready to do the unicorn so <laughs> um they like but they like to paint um we had we weren't able to paint it we did oil pastels but um, a lot of the kids that they want to paint and then there's some that they just want to draw so it we try to do a little bit of mix of everything so and and that's great it, you're even growing different skills when you are are drawing pictures of literal objects versus abstract where you're kind of slapping colors on, on a canvas and making it look cool um a lot of times kids who are into drawing actual objects uh, start honing in on details more and they're using their visual discrimination. Journaling is amazing. Yes, 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 yes. You are so right, Renee. Absolutely. Uh, thank you for sharing that. Journaling is such a de-escalator of anger. It is such a, it, it gives perspective. Sometimes kids think one thing happened and it was the worst thing ever. But as they as they write about it, it starts giving them perspective. Even even the strokes of the pen, whether you are drawing or writing, are very regulating. And they involve focus and attention to form those letters correctly and to space the letters and words properly and write them in the lines. You're working on proprioception, how hard to hold the pen. And proprioception is very tied. At, it's like the motor can... Command central communicates directly with the prefrontal cortex for where your sense of self is, your regulation and so forth. It is so powerful. And, um, you know, have them write three things they're grateful for. That is a, another one of those broadening uh, things, just like imagination is. So it is one of the most powerful things you can do. Um, my uh, junior high English teacher, at Madison Academy in Huntsville, Alabama, always gave us journaling time and it just hooked me. And, and it was always right about whatever you want. Uh, but sometimes if you're working on specific tasks with kids, you can give them like an open-ended sort of sentence starter to get them going on it. Um, but um, but the, 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 the appropriate set, you're just working on so many things. And, and then with the abstract, it, it's that, that creative part of the brain and that innovation. And, and you can even work on, concepts like more and less give me more play-doh which, which pile has more which has less you can do different um i'm just using play-doh because i don't have the background you do you do but make you know spread the play-doh out in a line okay now make one that's longer make one that's shorter so they start understanding the shades and degrees of things too you know before i forget we need to make sure they know which facebook page is yours it's it's abracadoodle north texas yes Okay, y'all, Abracadoodle, North Texas. Um, anybody who's friends with me, check out my likes. And I, I definitely like that one. It's, it's, it, it's on my page as a like. Um, so make sure that you go to her page because they are putting challenges out there. And she wants you to post those pictures, which is really cool. And how cool your kids think that is. You know, we tagged them in the comments for you, just so oh, you know. Thank so you. Oh, the thank Abracadoodle you. location that you need to follow is tagged in the comments. So check it out. 
my screen is really small, so I'm having a harder time seeing those comments. I'm sorry. Thank you. See, he's always he's always got this. He didn't. <laughs> I should have known he had done that. Um. So, I tell tell me about the people you hire. Like, how do you how do you pick who you're going to hire to teach these art classes? My teachers are very special, by the way. Um, <laughs> I love them all. Um, but basically, every one of my teachers has an art background. Either they are um, an artist themselves where they're actually commissioning art, or um, I have one that's a photographer, a full-time photographer, and she also uh, she's also a um, ceramic. She does the wheel, and this, um, actually, uh, one of our schools invited her to come and work with the other kids. It wasn't an abracadoodle thing, but they wanted her to come and help um, work with that. So basically, but... All of they have to have experience working with the children, of course, but um, they all are have some kind of art background. Love, passionate about art, so that's awesome. <laughs> it's when you have people, and that's how I feel about my teams. Also, they're they all have a calling for working with the families that we work with, and I don't. Yeah, we work with kids kind of facing some different struggles. You know, sensory motor, sometimes you know, reading challenges, uh, emotional dysregulation, all kinds of things, and no matter what challenges these kids have, they know whether people are there to log in time or whether they are on this planet to do what they're doing. It makes a huge difference. And I, I love how you were kind of inspired to do this uh, based on your your own kids' love of art. So um, I know that you do outside events. Tell, can you tell us a little bit, like what do people ask you if, if it's a Montessori or a regular school system or I think you even work with HOA sometimes, right? We, we will work with any site. <laughs> we can be creative um, and work with whatever you need. But we do some HOAs who uh, they offer us. We come out and do classes once a month with some of the HOAs. And um, we also do their events where we'll do glitter tattoos or face painting. And we'll do a craft table with the kids. Um, but we work with ISD. So we do after school program with a lot of the ISDs. Our Mini doodlers, three to five year olds. Typically, we are at Montessori schools, um, and we do that at, like an after school program. Also, we can also work with preschools. Um, summer programming is coming up. We do tons of camps, and we do. Um, I just lost my thought. We do. <laughs> we work. Um, we do in school field trips, so or in house field trips. So with preschool, oh, cool. they'll ask us to come out and do a project with the kids, and we may be there two to three hours in just two to three classes, um, do an art project with them based on their art theme for the the week. So we we can also we are since we meet st national standards, we can actually be the art program. Also, we work with one of the Montessori schools in Plano, where um, we are the art program. We go in on Wednesdays when the schools are open um, on Wednesdays and we're the art program. So um, we're a turnkey solution for pro, uh, programs like that. So when we reopen, we're doing virtual assessments right now uh, with families and still doing these kinds of things to provide support. We, we love our family so much. Like I know you do yours, mm -hmm. but I, I want to schedule a time for you to come to uh, one of my Dallas locations and, and offer that oh, for, okay. for our families. They would love that. I'm serious. So as soon as, soon as we <laughs> open, as soon as we open, because art works on critical thinking, it works on sensory, it works on motor. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the fact that they're, they are growing a sense of self, you can, what they're drawing about, you can even listen to music and have them draw a picture about how the music made them feel and then ask them open ended questions similar to what Shelly does. But in the meantime, and um, these are great things to do at home. Uh, or and we have curriculum. We have curriculum based just on it's music and art, and we will have a specific music based on the art project that we have that day. So we had drums. We listened to drum music. We had get, we did a um, maracas. We listened to music that had maracas. So we have different projects like that that we will actually make sure that the music is with us, so that we do that. So that's awesome. <laughs> And, and then you're just getting one more, you're getting one more uh, mode of sensory input while you're doing it. You know, we, I, I can tell you, um, you know, I was, I was born legally blind. Um, yes. It absolutely builds concentration. The, the focus, the concentration, the self-regulation to do those things a hundred percent. 
Uh, Dr. Robert uh, Sylvester, a former professor of education at the University of Oregon said, fine motor and, and multi-sensory fine motor work grows attention, self-regulation, learning just about everything else. We don't think about that. We think of a lot of times the motor system and the learning and cognition being separate, but think about how little ones are exploring their environment and as their motor skills grow and, and they start, these are all the parts of my body and then they're exploring <laughs> the environment. And if I do, if I roll the ball, it goes that way, you know, and learn how hard to throw a ball and all that kind of stuff that they are growing cognition as they're exploring their environment. And then art just opens up that, that creativity. And we don't want to squelch that, you know, that is uh, oh, what I was going to say about the, um, the, the fact that you use music is so powerful because since I was born legally blind and um, it took years for, for my parents to know it, for the doctors to figure it out. They just thought I was stupid. Um, and I had tumors on both optic nerves. So my auditory processing had been fine. My visual perception and processing once they fixed the acuity so my eyes could see was zero. What happened was they started working on the visual component. And you know what happened? Here's audit. Can you see my hands? I'm terrible at this. Auditory visual. All that happened is they switched places because my brain did not know how to do both things at the same time. So you are integrating yet another modality into that. And that is super powerful. Your you know, kinesthetic learning, tactile, proprioception, all those motor skills and imagination and teaching them that there's a lot of different paths to the same route. And it doesn't mean one's right and one's wrong. So I, I really I value that you're doing that so much. Um, uh, Tell me a little bit about the lessons, because I know that, like you said, that you will do a lesson about an artist and then you know, and learn about techniques and then they paint something related to that. Can you kind of just give an overview of what that looks like? We have new curriculum coming out all the time. Uh, the company's been around since 2002, so um, they they may have a theme um, like we're doing myths and legends right now. So all of the pro all of the projects will be based on. They're learning about myths and legends and maybe something a little bit different than the myths and legends that everybody knows. So we do the Loch Ness Monster and things like that. But the mouth and the line, would you have thought of putting that in, too? So they are really creative about coming up with the curriculum that we use. Um, all of the curriculum is written by master level educators and artists themselves. So um, everything that we have is tested and you know they really put a lot of work into it to uh, make sure that the kids are going to enjoy it and it's always a fun theme so well yeah you have to be doing something right you've been around that long <laughs> that's that's awesome so uh, is there anything else and uh, that you want to share um about what you do or kind of uh, tips and tricks for parents during this these stay-at-home mandates um i know that people are going to be checking you out on, on your Facebook page and, and maybe I bet birthday parties with you would be really fun. Um, we love birthday parties. <laughs> um, I, I'm thinking of a lot of Montessori uh, teachers that I'm friends with that would absolutely love this, but you know, things like, you know, it can be them playing doctor or playing school you know, all of all of these are imaginative ways that you start learning about roles and collaboration. Uh, when kids are playing dress up, it was kind of funny because I was I was such a tomboy growing up. I didn't know I was a girl until high school, but I still loved wearing my mom's. I would I loved putting on her high heels. They weren't, you know, I look at the heels I have like they weren't that high. They felt really high at the time. But we are actually really kind of getting mental schemas going of a family unit. If I dress up as the mother or the teacher and understanding how the teacher relates to the students, you know, cardboard boxes, build forts, you know, go dig in the dirt, plant seeds. And, and they, they learn cause and effect. I plant the seeds. I take care of it, water it. It grows into a plant. And you're also teaching them responsibility. So uh, did y'all do any of that stuff when your kids were younger? Any of the, were they always big imagination? Well, all of that. <laughs> A box went a long way in our family. <laughs> yeah. And it took a long time. It'd be like, oh, we need to get rid of the box. And we would have it forever. <laughs> uh, 
So yes, we did. Um, we did a lot of the creative stuff like that too. And I was not never afraid of um, art supplies. So I didn't, I loved to get messy when I was a kid. So I have no problem with them um, covered up and messy and doing all of that. So. Oh, I, I always, I don't think I, I always, I look at pictures when I was a little girl. I was pretty much always dirty. Like I take a bath and then I'm like, I'm muddy. I was out there playing in the dirt and stuff. But uh, I can tell you my, when I was growing up, I had such a vivid imagination that it scared my brother. <laughs> he would go to my mom, but my world didn't make sense. This is what I want. I was blind. They didn't know it. And so I was using pretend play, which is healthy for any child. But I was, I, I did not know what was going on in school because I couldn't see my equilibrium because of my tumors. I did not have a sense of being upright and balanced. And so when I was home, I would be the teacher. I, I had a chalkboard at home and it was my way of working out this weird experience that I don't understand, you know, and my brother would go to my mom and say, Heather's talking to people as if they're her students and there's nobody there. He, he was really concerned about my welfare <laughs> and it's, it's, called imagination you know it's one of the things that um saved me i think so, any tips for any projects using normal household items yeah we um i know the kool-aid is really fun you know it can be pipe cleaners but that's what we kind of talked about earlier but but do you have any other ideas for things they can do at home until they can get you to their place again <laughs> well it depends on how old uh, your child is too i mean if you have small in the what we call our Tuesday doodlers small scribbling activities are great for that age that's where they are developmentally so give them a pencil and then give them something else give them a different color and just let them go crazy with the 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 scribbling because that's that's where they are developmentally um the three to five year old I working with scissors is if you have a pair of safety scissors that is the best thing you can do with them at this age uh, we work on a lot of that give them a piece of paper and let them cut sweep it up at the end um yeah. but they yeah. will cut it into teeny tiny pieces but they really need that they need to learn how to do that and then give them different color pieces of paper and then glue it to another piece of paper and see what comes um that's an easy art project and um you know they're learning something too as they are cutting because they love to cut i'm telling you, if you give them scissors <laughs> <laughs> they love and they will give them scissors and say we're gonna do this and then when you look over there's a pile of paper I'm like what are we gonna do with that paper <laughs> but, because they just they like the experience and it's something they really are gonna need later on too so it is and and to your point it, it's really good to ask them what something else we could do with these supplies and let them even be creative before the project itself actually begins you're really letting them be innovative when you do that. And by the way, you, you really honed in on the cutting. Uh, cutting is really important because it's using what's called bilateral integration. You're holding a piece of paper with your non-dominant hand while you cut it with the other one. And when I use both sides of my body at the same time, it gets the brain communicating more and more and more. I have to do that when I'm in school, hold down the paper while I write. I have to coordinate. Let's, I hit this microphone every single time. I'm sorry. Um, see, anyway, I have to cross the midline of my body to read left to right across a page. So when they're drawing on a whole page or, 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 or gluing construction paper to a piece of paper, you are working on early literacy skills. Uh, using the whole body, crossing the midline or stabilizing a paper while you do something with another side of it, squeezing a glue bottle. Yeah, that's proprioception and you're they're really getting those muscles stronger. All of these things very directly relate to virtually any area of development you can think about. I mean, emotional regulation, all of those things. So um, anybody who, you know, share this with other people. I know there are so many... Uh, parents out there trying to work and because we do want kids to be able to do their own thing maybe you turn them loose on some art projects while you get some of your work done but then don't neglect the part about having them tell you about their art project or read a book with them 
and then have them write a story about what they think is going to happen next or to pick one of the characters out of the story and write a different story that kind of surrounds that character. And why did you write about this? Ask those why questions. That is so important and, and get them to generate why questions also. Um, yes, that is my contact information. But um, if you watch this later, leave questions, uh, comments in the below and we will be checking that out and please i'm uh, thank you so much for sharing your time with us shelly you know art is just one of the it's one of the best ways to grow kids developmental skills while having an awesome time and and getting that really that innovation going innovation creativity lead to flexible thinking self-regulation and all kinds of things. So, um, and check her out on the Abracadoodle North Texas Facebook page too. Thank you right. so much for having me, Heather. Thank yep. you. Well, thanks everybody. And of course, uh, make sure you tune in every, what, every, every week we've got Facebook lives going on, Heather. Yeah. Yep. yep. Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday at three 30. I am on okay. Facebook live with, and oh, and on Thursday, uh, I have Albert Wright, he is kind of a legend in childhood education. I'm not kidding. He's a keynote speaker all over the place. He draws crowds of thousands. I'm lucky enough to say he's a dear friend of mine. And he wrote a book called Dyslexia is My Superpower uh, to help kids understand when things aren't, they're different in, in celebrating that and talking about the strengths that come with that too. So we're gonna be talking about dyslexia. We're going to be talking about the reading challenges I had that people thought was dyslexia, but it wasn't and how you can distinguish those things. He is such a special person, he and his wife, and he's also been the parent in your shoes, just like I have been. So uh, that's going to be a really special time Thursday at 3.30. Excellent. Well, thanks everybody for tuning in. Uh, thanks, Shelly. Make sure everybody checks out Abracadoodle North Texas, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thank you.